Do you ever listen to Gorgrind and ask yourself, Man, this is great, but I wish it sounded sexier and could have been used for fucked up porn videos. Well, you're sadly in luck, cause that shutter exists and it's called Porto Grind. Ugh, goodbye monetization. <laughs> porno Grind, also known as Porn Grind and Porno Gore. So creative. It's a metal genre that derived from core grind, which derived from grindcore. Yes, this is the extreme metal cinematic universe. Porno grind takes the extreme playstyle and grotesque lyric from core grind, but adds element from death metal, again, and porn music. But unlike grindcore, where the focus is to play fast aggressive, porno grind plays more slower to make the riffs heavier and give them a lot more groove. Porno grind has a sister named Slam. Both genres are pretty much the same. They both focus on hard palm muted guitars, heavy drums, and low pitched gurgling vocals. But Slam doesn't really care about the lyrics and the vocals become more of a percussion. While Porno Grind is all about the seductive power of autopsy photos. The most notable bands are Meat Shits, Cock and Ball Torture, and Gut. Bands with a delightful list of songs that are perfect for a romantic evening. You haven't touched your spaghetti! Charlie Skull, no, it's not what it looks like! Let's start with the band name. Just pick the most disgusting name you can think of, and then come up with another disgusting name and combine them together, creating the ultimate band name. Anal grenade? Hmm. Anal and boob grenade. Yeah, now people will definitely take me seriously. Then just open up MS Paint and start working on the logo. Make sure the spikes go outside the letters so it gets even more unreadable. Then you throw it in paint.net, add some glow with a black background, and you're done. Oh, now this looks like a juicy, unreadable name that'll get you made fun of on metalsocks.com and then stolen on a cheap t shirt web store. What even is our band name anymore? Isn't it obvious? It's. Hmm. Now for the album cover! There are three types of album covers you can use. First one being real-life core photo with sexual imagery, something kinky or grotesque, or both. Second, artistic gore, where the art is semi-photorealistic with blood, gore and sex, but it's drawn, sometimes poorly. And third, anime. Just anime, but with blood and stuff. Something I forgot to mention in my Gorgrind video, Extreme Metal loves anime. Occasionally while browsing Pornogrind on Google or YouTube, I'll see an anime girl with realistic looking gore bleeding out of their torso. Sometimes they have other body parts ripped off, eyes popped out, sometimes it's not gory at all, which is more disturbing. I don't understand this weird connection, apparently you can't watch hentai without listening to Pornogrind. I even found this K-On show with different gore grind, porn grind, noise grind bands on it with a rip cage, and it's like... Why? Like, seriously, what's the connection here with anime and gore? More specifically, who would actually buy this? Some people have no shame. But okay, now I'm gonna talk about something serious. Guitar technique! Uh, no, this is not a joke section, this is something very useful if you want to make some porno grind or slam. You know those heavy palm you guitars that sounds like a sweet saw gnawing on bones? Besides a good balance of distortion, you can achieve some interesting palm mute results from the way your palm is placed. What I like to do is keep my palms as close to the bridge as possible so the palm mute sounds more open. That openness will give you a much better palm riff and make your song extra heavy, open and sexy. But now, let's talk tuning. Here's a shocking fact, you can use both standard tuning and drop tuning. What? I hear the elite is snarling with their seven strings in the back. Let me explain. Drop tuning is pretty good and you can get some easy slam progressions, but it also works well on standard tuning. How? Simple. You play these power chords. Instead of playing the fifth between the root and the octave, you play the fourth. Wait, I'm talking to metal musicians, they're not gonna understand what this means. Uh, drop the fourth finger and do this. Yeah, yeah, like that. You can also drop the octave when you need to play faster. The, the pinky finger one, you can drop that if you like. But experiment with what you like. I prefer drop tuning for easier and faster chord progression, while standard tuning has a much more menacing tone and works great for slower progressions. Anyway, bass. Cheat off your guitar's homework when it's not looking. Trust me, it's easier than writing your own bass tabs. 
Play with a pick and don't overuse the palm mutes. We don't want to ruin our delicate bass fingers, if you know what I mean. No, I don't. Drums. You can use your grandma's suing kid bongo drum for a snare, but any snare that sounds good works too. Learn more than just blast beat. Get some nice double kicks with a nice click. Strong cymbal hits like China and fills to fill those empty holes in my heart. And cowbell. And here's how you do a blast beat. But it's not all double kicks and blast beat. Usually in the mid-tempo section you can play slower with the guitar to get that nice groove going. Vocals. Record some growls and pitch them down. But if you can sound like a coffee machine, a broken tractor, or a sink filled with yesterday's leftover, then that works too. Oh hey, I found my album cover. Grind's lyrics, just like Gorgrind, has a misogynistic, homophobic, and ableist lyrics. But unlike Gorgrind, which is like that one kid in biology class that has a little too much fun dissecting frogs, Gorgrind is like that one kid that wants to fuck the frog. No matter how dead. Maybe take you to dinner with some sweet candles. But what does that one say? Oh, how pleasant. Anyway, your main topic should be to pick a body part and sing about how much you love it, how you want to have sex with it, what it should do, how it should be abused, and maybe a gross description of it. You can also sing about how much you hate women and how many prostitutes you want to kill. Cause my gods, this genre hates women. Like, disturbingly much. I know that's part of the genre's extremely nihilistic aesthetic, but still, there's only so many prostitute murder rampage songs I can listen to before I get bored. Anyway, let's start writing about your disturbing fascination with the human body. Maybe throw in a pun or a joke on the way. Are you okay, sir? Hey! Hey! Hey, Andre! What? For God's sake, man, are you okay? What rhyme with menstruation, Bukake? Have you tried rhymezone.com? They blocked me. Now that we've learned at least a dozen ways to express your interest in naughty body parts, it's time to funk it up and create some catchy tunes. Set your project to somewhere around 120 to 150 BPM for the sexiest rhythm. Load up your drum minion and find that one death metal kit. There it is. Start writing your drum grooves. Make sure to have a section that sounds like this. Then another one with more kick. And put a blast beat here and there. And finally, add that slow part. And then another slow part. Get your guitar amp VST and find a high gain amp. Then add a distortion pedal and crank it up just a little bit. Now let's write a guitar riff. Use the first 4-5 or five frets and start jamming. Keep the groove on the grid and don't overcomplicate it. You want your listeners to dance and fuck at the same time. Write the slow breakdown part. And then a slower breakdown part. For bass, find your cheat sheet and follow along. Make sure your bass tone is nice and thick. Get your vocalist to growl your love poetry. Feeding my exes. And then you add your sample. It can be from a twisted porno or a torture porn movie. As for me, I like dead memes read by not safe for work anime voice actors. Sometimes, I rip the skin. But to gore it up a bit, I add some sound effects like flies, guts, and chainsaws. What you usually hear in a magical girl anime. Then open up a romantic tunnel in the abandoned amusement park and adjust the reverb. And now comes the optional mixing part. If you want your song to sound DIY and basic, then just ignore these few tips. But for the rest of you that want your song to sound good, starting with the guitar, remove some sub and maybe scoop the mid a bit, just to piss off that studio engineer that tried to give you genuine advice. Then add a multi-comp thing and compress the low mid bit here. This will basically compress the palm mute so they don't get too much in the way of the low end of the mix. I think. I'm just copying Glyph Flicker. <laughs> For bass, do that thing where you copy the bass, add a ton of distortion on the second track, and cut out the low uh, high frequencies. Yeah, that one. For drums, eh, it's easy drummer, so it doesn't really need mixing, but here's some free pointers. Raise the high on the kick to give it more click. Raise a bit here on the snare to make it stand out a bit. Add a mid scoop on the toms if you like overusing toms like me. And there we go, a decent mix. And then easy mix to ruin it. Ah, JK, easy mix for easy mastering. 
And now you know how to make one decent porno grind track. Now film a shady music video with some stolen horror movie footage and call the day. This'll do. By the way, the vocalist for this song didn't want to appear on video because he doesn't trust himself with video equipment, and he has his own music to worry about, and that's fine. So instead I'm gonna lip sync this song as Cozy Posey. He's a character from a slam project I abandoned. Long story. Congratulations! You're a necrophiliac with a groovy soundtrack. Your recent Google searches have been sent to the police. Not again. The end! <laughs>